So a capsid is a protein shell inside a virus. The genetic material of a virus is contained within this other shell that in the case of a simple common cold might be spherical or in a retrovirus might be elongated. The capsid of an HIV is very peculiar in its geometry. It has exactly 12 pentagonal proteins and about 250 hexagonal proteins. And this is a way to smuggle the genetic material into the cell that it's invading and disguise itself and infect the cell. And this becomes a very interesting way for thinking about art forms and how they are transmitted and passed on from one generation to the other, about traditions essentially. And so capsids become a kind of analogy for thinking about cultural transmission. HIV and viruses are things that affect us all in some way or other. So they're things that we can all relate to, whether they're common colds or complex sexual health diseases. But discovered information about capsids through the work of Klaus Schulten and Juan Perillo in Chicago, and they led me to find Professor Greg Tower's work at UCL. And Greg is Professor of Virology, and really he's looking at narratives around the capsid and overturning the received wisdom that the capsid breaks up immediately it enters the cell. And what he's shown is that the capsid interacts with the host cell to disguise and cloak itself and smuggle the genetic material to the nucleus of the cell. And I really thought that this was a way of imagining a new project. In London there's two spaces, the gallery and Dilston Grove, and they both become installations in their own right. There's certain things that hinge between the two, particularly the life cycle animation in the gallery here, which becomes a kind of rubric for a virus walks into a bar in Dilston Grove. In any given project, there's a lexicon of images, particularly in capsid, there's this U shape, which is a cross section through a slice of packing foam that is literally stuck onto paintings or is redrawn and printed, but also appears as a piece of fabric sewn onto a costume. And this becomes a coder that allows you conceptually to join between all the different materials I'm using. Can you help me out here? I just need to get out of here so I can come in and have a drink. I'm parched. We ain't helping you. Look, I, I just want to get a drink, mate, like everyone else. So the easiest way to explain what a capsid is, is through this analogy of a virus walks into a bar. The film tells the life cycle of uh, HIV and certain characters are personified for dramatic purposes. This actually infantilizes the story, but it's a very easy way for people to latch on. It's a story of corruption and friendship and collaboration and the film is on a loop. So it's a very uh, simple and absurd way of telling the story. You four are enzymes these. Way longer come have I. Now drink a need I. Thirst my quench. The project doesn't illustrate science, it uses the science as a springboard to make something else and I use language and jargon to gather material to make the paintings and drawings and films from. So you'll see certain phrases that I've gathered from lab meetings and from my research into what Greg and his lab are doing that is somehow poetic when it's taken out of context. In the film this gets spoken backwards and sounds like a kind of Shakespearean tragedy. In some of the drawings it becomes a camp shrill humour, but this is a playful thing for me. The maximalist aesthetic is really a way of embedding multiple bodies of work into a larger whole. So this is about complexity. You are immersed in a very patterned, coloured, over-the-top world. And the purpose of this is to extend your experience in a, in a grander way, and that includes film and painting and printmaking. There's a lot of gaudy imagery, there's a lot of uh, objects that I've appropriated and incorporated using pattern. And pattern is really something I've learned from the cell and the capsid and narratives around the innate sensing mechanism, which is really the ability of a cell to detect foreign genetic material and kill it. I've learned that, in, say in a transplant operation, you might suppress the immune system with drugs. You can do that with a painting, and that can lead to new forms of collage. So what might seem unlikely imagery, things that say seasons, greetings, and so on, are really ways of bringing in foreign material into my vocabulary and owning them. 
So there's a pedagogical approach you can have to this show where you learn about science, but there's also an approach where you just come and are immersed in the colour and the pattern. And that I think that most people should leave with some joy and some laughs and some sort of Stendhal syndrome where they feel like they might have been immersed in a very, very overwhelming thing. Um, so I hope people enjoy it.